Solar power is scaling up even faster than cell phones. For six years running, half the world's additions of electric generating capacity have been renewable. The fastest growing parts are modular mass-produced renewables, like solar and wind power. This graph shows how much global generating capacity they added each year since 1990. In each of the past three years, they've added over 80 billion watts and won a quarter trillion dollars of private investment. So America now has more solar jobs than coal or steel jobs. China added more solar power in 2013 than the United States has. And the year before, China got more electricity from wind power than from nuclear power. Nuclear and coal plants prospects are fading worldwide. Nuclear was even losing capacity before the Fukushima disaster because wind and solar power are cheaper and can also make grids resilient, preventing cascading blackouts. But modern renewables also scale up in a fundamentally different way. Traditionally, we built giant cathedral-like power plants, as on the left, each costing billions of dollars and taking many years to license and build. But now each year, you can build a factory, as on the right, that produces each year thereafter enough solar cells to generate each year thereafter as much electricity as your cathedral ultimately will. So solar output scales up incredibly quickly. Mass producing solar and wind equipment makes it cheaper, so it grows faster, so it gets cheaper, so it grows faster. In 20 states today, entrepreneurs can put solar power on your roof with no money down and beat your utility bill. Soon they'll offer cash back. This graph uses a logarithmic scale, so each division on the vertical axis shows a tenfold change. To show the reductions in the U.S. market price of solar power modules in blue and of wind farms in green, these dramatic price drops continue with no end in sight. Yet, many people still claim solar cells and wind power are too variable to produce much electricity reliably because we can't cheaply store huge amounts for when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow. That's a myth. We don't need a storage breakthrough or so-called 24-7 or baseload coal and nuclear plants to keep the lights on. Here's why. First, variable does not mean unpredictable. We can predict solar and wind power more accurately than demand. In this stormy winter month, forecast output from all French wind farms almost exactly matched the actual output a day later. And second, we built the electric grid because no kind of power plant is 24-7. They all break. Those giant plants are shut down about 10 or 12 percent of the time, losing a billion watts in milliseconds often for weeks or months, often without warning. The grid handles this intermittence by backing up failed plants with working plants. And in the same way, but often more cheaply, the grid can manage the forecastable variation of solar and wind power by combining them with renewables in other places or of other kinds. Let me show you how this can work. For example, the isolated Texas grid's electric loads in the summer can get much smaller and less peaky with efficient use. Then we can install enough wind and solar power to make 86% of the annual electricity and get the other 14% from dispatchable renewables, the ones you can have whenever you want, like geothermal, small hydro, solar thermal electric, and feedlot biogas burned in existing gas turbines. This 100% renewable supply can then be matched to the load by putting excess electricity into two kinds of distributed storage, ice storage air conditioning and smart charging of electrified autos, then recovering that energy when needed and filling the last gaps with unobtrusively flexible demand. Only about 5% of the annual renewable generation in this hourly dispatch simulation is left over as surplus, so the economics should be pretty good. Using such choreography, some European countries, again without adding bulk storage, are already delivering 25 to 58 percent renewable electricity, far more reliable than America's. 
Iowa and South Dakota, too, are already one-fourth wind-powered today. They in Europe have far transcended renewable power's supposed reliability limits. Whatever exists is possible. The National Renewable Energy Lab, as well, has already choreographed reliable 80 to 90 percent renewable electricity for the lower 48 United States. Bottom line, bulk electricity storage and fossil fuel backup are the costliest ways to make the grid flexible, so we would use them last, not first. A breakthrough in cheap bulk storage would be helpful, but not vital. We needn't wait for it, and the market isn't waiting. Only the myth holds us back.